All right, we're back with this kind of landscape and you guys can probably tell what that means. So yeah, like I said, familiar territory, but perhaps to those of you who are new to the channel, you're not sure what I'm talking about. This is Morongo. That right there is Morongo Casino. And this is pretty much where I started my poker career. I did play at another casino for a short time when I first started, but for the most part, this is where I grew up as a poker player, if you will. Started at 1-3, then I played 2-5, eventually 5-10, and when I wanted to make the leap to the next level, I went to Hustler Casino and moved closer to LA because 510 is about as big as it gets here at Morongo, maybe 51020. And that's why we're here today. That's right, I drove out here on a Saturday to play with some old friends and also capture a vlog for you guys. So for those of you guys who sometimes ask me to play smaller games that are perhaps a bit more relatable, this video is for you. Now, before we go inside and play some cards, I wanted to remind you all, in case you didn't see the last video, that I will be in Austin, Texas uh, in a couple days. If you're watching this the day it comes out, or perhaps the day after, then I'm about to be in Austin, Texas. I'm gonna be playing cash games a little bit off stream, mostly on stream. Feel free to say hello. And if I don't see you there, then stay tuned for the next video where I'm gonna recap my trip. And it should be some big results because I spoke to Skull Mike, the guy who runs the games over there, and he says the games are gonna be 5,100 or 5,100, 200. So some big swings coming up in my financial situation, thanks to the launch. But yeah, that's all I got for now. Enough talking, let's go inside and play some cards. Actually, I don't think it's in this building anymore. It's in some other building. That building, that's where the poker room is. Let's walk over there and gamble. All right, everybody, here we are once again at Morongo. Today we're playing a little bit of a smaller game, 5, 10, 20. Still no small chunk of change, especially when the max buy-in is $5,000. That's a lot of money. Anyway, in the first hand, early position opens to 75, and I make it 250 on the button with ace-queen. Pretty good starting hand, so I think raising makes sense. Back to the original raiser who calls, and we go heads up in position. To a good flop, it's ace three two with two hearts out there, giving me top pair and a very strong kicker. When he checks, I bet small, 175 bucks, around a third of the pot. He makes the call and we see the six of diamonds on the turn. He checks it again and now we can decide whether we wanna continue betting or check back and see what happens on the river. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not a thousand percent sure what the optimal play is. I would assume that it's a mix of both considering that I have the queen of diamonds. Again, not super sure, but anyway, I check it back and we see the king of clubs on the river. I expect him to lead out now, some percentage of the time at least, since all the draws missed and if he's got an ace, he's probably gonna value bet it, but he checks it for a third time, which I do think is a good play, just not what I expected if I'm being honest. Anyway, it seems likely I've got the best hand at this point, so I bet 600 bucks. He thinks for a bit and calls, and sure enough, we win this first hand of the night. In the next one, there's one limper before I look down at seven six of diamonds in the small blind. This is a three blind game, so I think calling is fine here, but I prefer to raise it up considering there's only one limper so far. I make it 120 and get called by the big blind, the straddler, and the limper. So four of us going to a flop this time. I'm out of position, so when it comes queen nine six, with no diamonds out there and just bottom pair, I start with a check. And now the big blind bets out for $275. The other two players fold, but when it gets back to me, having flopped bottom pair, I think folding is probably already okay. Even though we did flop a pair and he could be stabbing with straight draws or flush draws, the fact that he's leading out into three opponents, I think could be strong and even if he does have draws we're not in great shape with bottom pair against those hands but i decide to come along for the ride and see what happens on the turn which is the five of spades 
bad to worse. I check it, ready to give it up, but surprisingly he checks it back, and we get an interesting river. It's the four of spades, putting the fourth spade on the board. And now I've got one of the worst hands I would ever have in this situation, and after he checks back the turn, I think it's more likely he's weighted towards a queen, perhaps a hand like second pair, that leads out on the flop for some protection slash value, and then is not too happy with this run out. So I decide to take a stab at it and pretend that I've got a big spade in my hand, which I could have played this way. For example, king queen with a spade or perhaps pocket jacks with a spade, etc. So I put in 700 bucks. My opponent folds without too much thought and we take this one down probably with not the best hand. In the third hand, there's two limpers. However, I only see one limper in the moment so when i look down at ace seven of diamonds in late position i raced to 75 not a huge deal but just not as big as i would have made it if i had seen that there were two limpers ahead of me we get called by the small big blind and both of the limpers so four or five of us i lose track standard morongo stuff going to this flop of king eight four with one diamond Checks around to me, and I wish I could have this one back because I think betting, despite being up against a bunch of opponents, is probably okay with this hand. We have some backdoor potentials, and no one's going to be too strong on a board like this, aside from me, I think. So, yeah, I wish I had bet, but I didn't. The turn is the six of diamonds, which is the dream card to continue bluffing. If I had bet the flop, gives me a straight draw and the nut flush draw, but... Obviously, the hand has played differently now that the flop checked around, and the small blind seems aware of that because he leads out for $200. Action folds all the way to me, and I don't really think raising makes a lot of sense. It would be odd to have played a strong hand that way on the flop, so if I raise on the turn now, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. At least that's my opinion. I decided to just call, and we see the 10 of hearts on the river, which means we missed everything and have just ace high. Now the small blind checks, and... I am a fan of bluffing in the right spots, I think, but this is not one of them. I decide to wave the white flag, don't really expect him to lead out on the turn against a bunch of players, and then just check the river to fold. So I check it back, and thank goodness, because he turns over king eight for flopped top two pair. It turns out not betting on the flop probably saved me some money, despite not being the best play, at least that's what I think. <sighs> Getting too long-winded again. I gotta shorten these analyses because there's a lot of hands today. In the next one, early position opens to 60 and I am in middle position with king-queen unsuited. Not really strong enough to call, especially with a bunch of players left to act behind. So course of action here, I think, is to mix between folding. I know that seems a little bit tight. And of course, re-raising, trying to get this one heads up. This time, I make it $200. Now the button cold calls, and then early position, who originally raised to 60, calls as well. So three of us going to a flop, which comes pretty good. It's queen, eight, six, two diamonds, one spade. So we've got top pair, but it is a very dangerous board. So when the early position player checks, I decide to get a little deceptive and check it. I've played with the button a few times, and he's prone to stabbing a little bit wide. And of course, this is also a board where both of these guys could have connected with hands much stronger than just top pair. So I check it, button checks it back. Turn card is a five of diamonds, which is terrible. It brings in straight draws, potential flush draws, obviously completes a flush if either of these guys flopped a flush draw. So not my favorite card by any means. Early position checks, and this time I decide to bet $230. Now, I know I just said a bunch of stuff gets there, so perhaps this bet doesn't make a lot of sense, and honestly, I wouldn't really disagree with that, but if the button had flopped some sort of draw or a strong hand, I suspect he would have bet when it checked to him, and if the early position player had any sort of strong hand, I suspect he would have bet the turn himself. So after the button checks back the flop and the early position guy checks the turn, I suspect I've got the best hand and could use some protection. So again, I throw in $230. The button thinks for a bit and makes the call, and so does the other player. So still three of us going to a river. Lots of bad cards could come, and the nine of clubs is no exception. Now any seven makes a straight. Not to mention a bunch of two pair combinations are available that weren't already there. So when the early position player decides to lead out for 900, it kind of sucks, but I think we have a pretty easy fold, mainly because there's a player left to act behind me who could easily have improved on this river. If we were heads up, I might get a little curious and call with top pair, but I decide to let it go. And then the button folds as well. So not really sure if we got bluffed or not, but then the player who won the hand shows the ace of diamonds. 
which I think probably confirms that we got bluffed. Unlikely that he plays the nut flush this way. So yeah, nice hand to him. In the next one, there's an early position limp. Middle position makes it 100, and I am next to act with ace queen of hearts. A very pretty starting hand, so I raise it again. 350 to go. Early position limper folds, but the guy who made it 100 makes the call. So we're going to go heads up to a great flop. King 7-3 with two hearts. Not only do we have the nut flush draw, but this is also a board that I'd connect with often having re-raised pre-flop. So when he checks, I decide to bet small, just like I would with all my hands in this situation. 250 into the middle, and he makes the call. Turn card's not great. It's the king of clubs. Pairing the top card and of course bringing in another flush draw. He checks it again, and now I think checking back is a fair option, but also continuing to bet small makes some sense as well to me. This time I decide to take the more active route and put in a bet of $425. I suspect this will put him in a tough spot with all sorts of pocket pairs. Maybe a hand like 8-7 suited, etc. We also have a good hand to do this with because we have removal to ace-king and king-queen. Of course, king-jack and king-10 suited, for example. Those hands are still available, but just a minor consideration. My opponent, however, is uninterested in all those thoughts because he comes along once again looking for some help on the river or at least a card that I could continue to bluff on, like any 10 or bigger but that's not what happens the river is the eight of clubs which is not ideal he checks it for a third time and this isn't really one of those cards that i was planning to continue bluffing on so i decide to wave the white flag and check it back and i'm a bit surprised to hear my opponent announce a flush sure enough he turns over the six three of clubs for the flopped pair and then continues on the turn with the flush draw and improves to a flush on the river technically the best hand all the way at least after the flop Nice hand to him. Kind of a shame to have flopped such a big draw and not improve at all, but at least we didn't lose too much. Next, early position opens to 60 and I make it 200 next to act with pocket fours. Now I'll be the first to say this is probably a little bit too wide, but I like to give action when I come to Morongo. So whenever a hand is kind of close, I err towards the action side of things. Cut off on button, cold call the $200, and now it gets to the straddler who has had enough and jams all in for 1070 bucks. Again, this is an easy fold, but that's not what I do. I call with pocket fours, knowing very likely that I'm either in terrible shape or flipping at best, and that's if the two players behind me fold. I had a strong feeling they would fold, though, just, you know, having played with these group of players many times, as mentioned. And sure enough, they do fold. It would have been a bit troublesome if one of them had called behind me. And now suddenly I'm playing this giant bloated pot with pocket fours out of position, but we don't have to worry about that. We decide to run it twice, so two runouts coming up. The first one comes ace-jack-8 on the flop, and my opponent instantly says, that's not me. I think that's indicative that he's probably got a hand like pocket kings or pocket queens. And presumes that I have an ace. Of course, I don't. I've just got these lonely pocket fours. But no worries. The river comes a four. So we make a set on the first board. Second one is king, jack, something, something, something. And we end up chopping versus pocket queens. So in the end, we win a little bit of money, which is rather undeserving, if I'm being honest. But that's fine. Let's move along to the next one where I've got eight, seven of diamonds. I make it $50 and get called by the button and straddler. Three ways to a flop of 10, 10, 8 with two hearts. Straddler checks and I decide to bet small. 40 bucks. Only the button calls so we go heads up to a turn which is the five of spades. This time I check it and now he bets $100. We've got a good bluff catcher I think. Not having a heart in my hand and of course my eight matches an eight on the flop. So I make the call and we see the deuce of diamonds on the river. I check it again and now he bets 200. Hmm. Kind of a close spot. On one hand, a bunch of the draws missed, like flush draws and straight draws. On the other, we do lose to, well, I guess a 10, obviously, and any better eight, although I wonder if he would bet that twice. So yeah, when I'm getting a good price and I've got a good hand to call with, I tend to do that. So that's what I do, and we end up winning versus Jack Nine of Hearts. Just kidding, he's got ace 10, that's Tripp's top kicker. 
I can't beat that hand. Should also mention that having a seven in my hand is not great since we want him to have nine seven sometimes, but it was only 200 bucks. So yeah, in the next one, there's a $40 straddle. So we're playing five, 10, 20, 40. Folds to me in the $20 blind. That means I'm almost last to act. There's one more player. I toss in the extra 20 with Jack eight offsuit. And now the player in the $40 straddle makes it 150. Kind of a small raise. So with Jack eight offsuit, I think sometimes folding, sometimes calling in this spot makes sense. Not sure if that's true. Maybe a little too wide, especially without the big blind ante. But like I said, I'm here to gamble a little bit. So I make the call and we go to a flop of queen seven, five, all hearts. Not the worst flop ever for jack eight offsuit with the jack of hearts. I check it and he checks it back. Turn card is the nine of hearts, which gives me the jack high flush. Or is it the queen high flush? I never really know how to refer to that. But anyway, I check it again. Worth mentioning that I think sometimes leading out is okay, but I think it's also fair to check with strong hands once in a while because if we're always betting flushes and checking when you don't have a flush, well, that seems like an obvious problem to me. So I do check it and now he bets 150. We're beating all sorts of bluffs. So of course I call. River is the eight of clubs. I check it again and now my opponent bets huge, $600 the size of the pot. Did not expect that. I think if he had a flush, he should probably go for like a half pot bet. But what do I know? I'm the sucker because when I make the call, still beating all possible bluffs, we end up losing to the nuts. Ace 10 with the ace of hearts. And my friend here gets max value. So I guess just ignore everything I said and go check out his vlogs if he's got any. In the next one, the $40 straddle is on once more. Middle position limps and I make it $200 from the small blind with queen jack suited. The $40 straddler and the limper both call. So we go three ways to a flop, which comes out real nice. It's jack eight three with one club, giving me top pair and some backdoor possibilities as well with the eight of clubs out there. I bet $210 and get called by both of these guys. So perhaps a little bit concerning with a semi strong top pair. Turn card is the deuce of hearts, and I think with an over pair, I'd continue to bet for value here, but with queen jack, probably okay to check it and protect my hands once in a while, so that's what I do. The straddler checks as well, but now the player in middle position does not. Instead, he jams all in for around $950. After playing my hand this way, of course, I can't go anywhere, so I call, and the player behind me folds. We decide to run it just once, being all in already versus the player who was last to act. River card comes to the king of clubs, which is just a brick. He doesn't look too happy, so I'm not interested in making anyone show the losing hand. I turn it over, and it's good, so we win this one. Shortly after that one, this hand comes up where there's one limper. The button makes it $100, and I look down at queen deuce suited in the small blind. So how is this a hand, you may ask? Well, just like this, I decide to re-raise to $400. On one hand, there's a limper and then the button raised. So yeah, he could have all sorts of holdings that we can try to attack. But on the other hand, queen deuce suited is just not one of the hands that you wanna do that with. Better to have an ace or, you know, it's just something more playable. So with that disclaimer out of the way, I make it $400 and the button does make the call. So we're gonna go heads up to a flop which is not bad, ace 10, three with a diamond. I mean, yeah, I still have just queen high, but this is a board that's gonna be pretty good for me. And we also have some good turn cards to continue bluffing on, like any king, jack, or diamond. So when I bet $250 and my opponent calls, I'm not super worried about it just yet. And we do get one of those good turn cards. It's the jack of hearts. Could have been a bit better, but you know, we can still represent strong hands like aces, pocket tens, ace jack, ace ten, king queen, all that stuff. And with all those hands, I'd bet around the size of the pot, perhaps a little bit larger. So, with a hand like the one I have, I'm gonna do the same thing. I bet $1,500, a slight over bet. My opponent does not seem happy with it. He thinks for quite a long time, looks at his stack, and sees that he's got around $7,000 left perhaps thinking that this pot could get a little out of hand if he were to make the call here on the turn. So he decides to make a very conservative fold and shows me ace-king as he mucks it. 
Now I know on the surface that seems like a crazy fold, but it's really not that bad, I think. His hand essentially becomes a bluff catcher on this turn card. So yeah, it might look a little bit tight, but he loses to a bunch of stuff too. And sometimes he's gonna be right in making this fold. So we go to the next one after getting that bluff through in which early position opens to 75. There are two callers and I call in the big blind with pocket fives. The straddler calls as well, so we go like four or five ways to a flop, which is 10-3 deuce with two hearts. Action checks all the way around, and we see an interesting turn card. It's the six of diamonds, which means 5-4 is now the nuts. Of course, I don't have 5-4, but as I have pocket fives, I can try to pretend that I do if it comes to it. And it looks like the opportunity will arise because after I check, the player on my left now bets 250, and then a player on his left calls the 250. Other guy folds and when it gets back to me, I'm gonna spring the fake trap as if I did have the nuts. A little bit adventurous of a play, but I would be doing this with 5-4 suited, of course, and any flopped set or turn set for that matter. So I make it $1,400, pretty big raise. I'm expecting either to get it through now or at least heads up going to a river and then we can try to steal it once again on good river cards. But maybe it won't come to that because the first player folds and then the second player goes to fold. But then he and I seem to realize this at the same time. He's only got like three or four hundred dollars behind. So after having put in over half his stack in this hand, kind of tough to let it go. And in the end, he does indeed agree with that because he says, whatever, I'm all in and tosses in his like $400 into a pot that's now considerably bigger than that. My mistake for not noticing that he didn't have much behind happens sometimes, especially when I'm focused on filming, making sure that everything else production-wise is going as planned. I do tend to occasionally miss these kinds of details, which in this case might have screwed me. We might, however, have the best hand if he's got like a flush draw or something but it's not meant to be. The river is the nine of diamonds and we end up losing to pocket eights. That says, what the hell, I'm not folding. And righteously so, because I just have pocket fives and I lose this hand. In the next one, I got ace queen suited again. This time it's the diamond variety. I make it $50. Player on my left makes it 175. Player from the previous hand with pocket eights, he cold calls. And now it gets back to me. I decide to raise it again probably have the best hand and even if I don't this hand is quite playable post flop so I make it 675 the guy on my left who made it 175 is done with it he lets it go but then it gets back to Mr. Pocket Eights and once again he's like whatever I'm all in <laughs> so he's got around 800 or 900 now after the previous hand well it has been a few orbits since then but Anyway, he's got like 900. I, of course, make the call, and we're up against pocket tens. Run out comes ace high, though, so we win this flip and take down a nearly $2,000 pot. And that brings us to the last hand of the night, which, in my opinion, is the best one yet. The straddle is on for $40 from yours truly. We're playing like five-handed at this point, I think. The small blind limps in for 40 and then the $20 straddler makes it 175 I've got 10-9 suited, which I think is worthy of both a call or a raise. I'm playing pretty deep against the guy on my right who made it 175, and we've got position, so I think raising certainly has merit. That's what I do this time. I make it $600 to go. The small blind who limped in originally folds, but the guy on my right who raised to 175 comes along. So we're going heads up to a flop, which I have mixed feelings about. It's queen jack six with two diamonds. So we've got an open-ended straight draw, but it's also a board that's gonna hit him quite often after raising pre-flop and then calling a re-raise out of position. Wouldn't be surprised if he's got hands like ace-queen, king-queen, ace-jack suited, maybe king-10 suited, all these sorts of holdings that are not going anywhere just yet. He could also have maybe pocket sixes, for example. So yeah, um, not really interested in going crazy on this exact flop despite only having 10 high but of course not giving up with it just yet i check it back once he checks and we see the seven of spades on the turn card i'm expecting him to bet out now either with a strong hand or some sort of bluff but he checks it again i think this means that at best he's got one pair type holdings so i decide to now bet 
as a bluff, of course, with my sheepish 10 high. I put in $820, around two thirds the size of the pot, hoping to get a snap fold from a hand like Ace-9 suited or pocket fives, for example, but it's not meant to be. My opponent thinks for a bit and makes the call. I think that confirms my suspicion on the flop that he's got top pair or a hand along those lines, maybe a non-believing second pair, for example. So we're gonna need some help on the river, but even if we don't get any help, we could try to bluff certain river cards. However, that won't be necessary, guys. It comes in offsuit eight. That's right, the absolute nuts out of nowhere. And this is what you call a dream spot for sure. My opponent checks it again, and of course now I am gonna bet, but this time it's for value. I go for around two thirds once again, maybe around 75%. That's 2,150 US dollars that I would like to win additionally in this hand. My opponent does not seem thrilled about it, but he doesn't snap fold, which is great. After a few seconds, it seems obvious that he will not be check raising, which I thought might happen on this kind of board, but it's not to be. He's either gonna call or fold. About a minute or two go by before eventually my opponent announces call. That's going to be good news as we've got the best possible hand. So I turn it over right away. And sure enough, we win this over $7,000 pot. A pretty big one in a game that's just supposed to be 5, 10, 20. And shortly after this, it was time to rack up and get going. So quite a sweet ending to the night. As always, I hope you all enjoyed the hands. So that brings an end to quite a long day of poker. I ended up playing like nearly 12 hours, which is uh, a lot more than I play normally these days. But I'm happy to report a winning session, a massive win, in fact, of 89 US dollars. That's right, $89 win today. Maybe based on the hands you guys saw, it looks like I won more than that, but there were countless hands where I had ace king or pocket tens, you know, ace five suited. These kind of hands that I put some money into the pot with pre-flop and then nothing good happened after the flop. So I just fold. Those things add up after a while and I'm obviously not gonna include all those nothing hands on the vlog, but yeah, it's not always as good as it seems. Only $89 in profit today. Definitely better than losing, but when you consider how far away this place is to drive to and playing all day, etc., perhaps not the best investment of time. I did, however, have a great time with a bunch of old friends, so that's probably worthwhile in and of itself. But yeah, that's it for today, guys. As always, thank you for watching. Keep in mind that I'll be at the lodge next week for some high stakes streams. Probably gonna have bigger swings than $89. Either for better or worse, you'll have to watch and find out. Thank you guys for the support, and until next time, good luck at your local tables. Peace.